Hey everybody. So, story today, duck and goose. One of my favorites. Now, one thing like I tell uh, the kids in my class, and I'm sure your teachers have said the same thing, is if you've ever heard this story before, don't spoil it. Because there's a surprise at the end of the story. And uh, one thing the kids love to do is spoil surprises. And I'm gonna just give you a little hint, uh, because I was a kid once and I'm an adult now. When people spoil surprises, we all can't stand you. You know, you think you're being cool, like, oh, I know what happens. We're all like, ugh, you ruined it. So if you've got that secret, great, keep it in your head. You know what you could even say when it's done? You could say, oh, I knew it was gonna happen. Great, just don't spoil the story. And now it's beautiful. You could yell at the computer screen. I don't care, because I can't hear you. Duck and Goose, one of my favorites. Oh my, what is that? Duck quacked. Well, that's a silly question, Goose honked. It's a big egg, of course. Of course it's an egg, I know that, huffed Duck. What I mean is, where did it come from? Goose looked skyward. Looked skyward. He's up in the sky. He looked to the river. He looked to the fields. He thought very hard. Who are you? Yes. <coughs> so you can see, Duck and Goose find an egg. I, said Duck, puffing out his feathered chest, I am the one whose egg this is. I saw it first. Goose quickly raised one webbed foot. It's mine. I touched it first, he said. So you can see here, they're getting into a little argument over the egg and who it belongs to. Hey, you should never put your dirty foot on an egg, Duck scolded. Don't you know anything about caring for eggs? Yes, I do, Goose cried out. Stop yelling, cried Duck. Don't you even know that you're screaming and very likely disturbing the baby bird who's trying to grow inside this egg? Goose wished that Duck wasn't right. He lowered his head and whispered softly, I, I'm, I'm very sorry. Go, go back to sleep in there. My, that's quite a beauty you have, called a blue bird from up on a tree branch. Thank you, it's mine, quacked Duck. Actually, it's mine, honked Goose. So they both want to be kind of the mother of this egg. So, asked Duck, what do we do now? We should do something, suggested Goose. Yes, you're right, good thinking, agreed Duck. Like what? And here's what Duck's thinking. Look what Duck's thinking. This egg is private property, Duck's egg, no honking, $5 fine, no geese allowed. Duck and Goose each thought. Now look what Goose is thinking. If you're a duck, keep walking. No ducks beyond this point. Quiet, please. Absolutely no quacking in this area. Well, well, we must keep the egg warm and till the little fuzzy guy's ready to come out, said Goose. Excellent idea, exclaimed Duck. He pushed past Goose. Step aside, I shall do just that. But Goose was quick too. So now they're fighting over the egg. Even more so. After a flurry of fussing, grunting, groaning, slipping and sliding, honking and quacking, both duck and goose ended up back to back on top of the egg. And yes, that is the cover. Scoot over, I don't have any room, said duck. You're much closer to me than I am to you, said goose. Stop yelling in my ear, Goose. Shh, said Goose, pointing to the round thing behind them. Beneath them, I'm sorry. Yes, 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 we must remember to be quiet. Quiet, quiet, quiet. We mustn't disturb the little one. And so they sat very still, very quiet, waiting. For a long time, they waited. They listened to the crickets chirp and the frogs burp. I'm going to teach this baby bird to quack like a duck, Duck said. Well, I'm going to teach it to honk like a goose, Goose honked back. I'm going to teach this baby girl to waddle. So am I, said Duck. They heard the pitter-patter of the rain. I'm going to teach this baby bird to swim, Duck said. Me too, honk Goose. To pass the time, they sniffed wildflowers in the warm sun and shared breadcrumbs while Goose taught Duck to, honk, Duck to honk. They watched the sunset in the sky and Duck taught Goose to quack. Now, friends, I love this because... These two enemies from just a few pages ago have really bonded over this, over this egg. And they're now kind of working together to, to make it hatch. 
They counted the stars in the night sky. Uh, let's teach our baby to fly, said Goose. Good idea, said Duck. I'm sure our baby will be a fast learner, said Duck. If it takes after you and me, you're right, said Goose. So look at this. Now it's our baby. I love that. Together they waited until... Did you feel that? Duck nodded. Yeah. Did you feel that, Goose? Goose nodded. It's time, Goose! It's time! It's time! It's time! What's it time for? The baby to come out. Quickly, Duck slid down and started running in circles around the rack. What do we do now? 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 I think we should remain calm, said Goose. E -e Excuse me. A little voice called out. Duck stopped. In all the exciting confusion, he had failed to notice the bluebird kicking their egg. Can, can I play too? And look at both of Duck and Goose. They're both kind of like, what do you want? And why are you kicking your egg, you little punk? Play? This is no time for play, yelled Duck. This is no time for games, yelled Goose. And what's with the kicking, huh? I was only trying to get your attention, said the little bluebird. Well, you got it, said Duck. False alarm, Goose. Back to work. Can't you see we're very busy here? Goose explained to them, to the bluebird. This is serious business. This is perhaps the most important business and moment of our lives. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, said the bluebird. I had no idea. I just thought maybe I could play with your ball. It's a really nice one, she added. And then she flew away. I thought maybe I could play with your ball. Goose gulped. Ooh. Did, did, did she say ball? He whispered to Duck. Y you know, I have my doubts, said Duck. It's a bit squishier than most eggs I've seen. Y yeah, yes, I must say, I was somewhat suspicious of those big dots. It, it may not be an egg, but, but it is lovely said Duck. Oh, oh abso absolutely, Duck. It's a keeper, said Goose. Now they realize that their egg was really a what? Really a ball. As the crickets chirped, the frogs burped, and the grass swayed in a gentle breeze, Goose quacked and Dunk honked, Duck honked, and the ball bounced rolled, and sometimes their ball even flew, just like a baby bird the end. Now, this story, Duck and Goose, written by and illustrated by Tad Hills, is a fun one. And it has a lot of twist, right? You think this whole time, first, there are Duck and Goose are enemies. And they're fighting over this egg. Then they bond over this egg. They're going to care for this egg. They're going to raise this baby to be their own. And then they realize it's not an egg, it's a ball. But a lot of fun stuff happens and it teaches a few lessons too. Now, here's what we're going to do. When this video is done, you're going to watch three videos. One of me, one of Addison, and one of May. This is from a few years ago. But we're each going to um, retell the story, which means tell what happened in the story. And you're going to pick the one that you think does the best job of retelling. All right, when you retell a story, do you want to tell every teeny tiny part that happens? No, not exactly. Do you want to tell only one part that happened? Well, not exactly either. Remember the story, I don't know if you ever remember hearing it when you were a kid, or maybe you'll read it when you're an adult, but there's the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, right? And Goldilocks is this naughty little girl, and she goes into the woods, and she finds this bear house. And in the house, there's lots of different things. And one of the things she finds is porridge. Porridge is like oatmeal. And one of the bowls is too hot. One of the bowls is too cold. But one of the bowls is just right. So we're going to try to find that just right retail. All right? So here you go.